Like, what do we personally need to be able to turn down the busyness of life, the busyness of our responsibilities, so that we give ourselves permission to drop in and say, hi, here I am. Vulnerable and exposed, ready to be seen, ready to be heard, ready to exchange love. And are you, my partner, my sexual partner, ready to meet me here? And can we play? But if our arousal is coming from an internal place, what do we do to cultivate it? And that's why I go back to, I want women to feel turned on by their life, their lover and themselves. So what are we doing personally to cultivate and create turn on? Do I feel turned on by how I'm caring for myself? Did I take a shower and put lotion on my body and put on a shirt with my strapless bra and my shoulders showing? <laughs> Did I take a pause and allow sunlight on my face and go out in nature and go for a walk? This month, have I been honoring my 28 day moon cycle? I am just finishing bleeding. And this cycle, I really, really needed quiet and downtime more than many others. Are we honoring that? And are we getting clarity with, am I turned on by my life? Am I taking responsibility and making choices so that my days are filled with things that feel inspiring? And if I'm not inspired by the work I'm doing, the place I'm living, the relationships that I'm having, the employees that I'm working with, what am I doing to shift it? And if I'm not currently inspired by, you know, Michael and I, we've been listening to this podcast together and it's become a whole conversation because regarding the, the, for us, we have young kids at home and he's the caretaker of the kids. And now for him, it's almost like he's needing to leave the house. Like, do we need to go get a hotel room? You know, like door closed. I'm good. Let's go for him. If the kids are in the house, it's like too much. And that's where we are. Do I feel inspired by the work that I'm doing and, and challenged and pushed? Yeah. And, you know, I think it's these moments where we find creative ways to connect. When in this podcast, when she talks about scheduling sex, she says, it's not that we need to schedule sex. It's actually that we need to schedule time to connect. Take sex off the plate for now. Put arousal on the schedule where we say, hi, how are you doing? And do our best not to talk logistics, not to talk work, not to talk household, not to talk travel, not to talk kids, not to talk employees, not talk about landscaping and all whatever the, the, that to say, no, we are going to schedule time to connect. And then what? And in this conversation of switching the focus to ourselves, what if we actually schedule time to focus on ourselves, to focus on our own arousal, not from, like she says, a healthy narcissistic way, right? You know, I look at on this call, Whitney, maybe you're doing that because you're trying to figure out, do I even want to be in this relationship? Is it salvageable? Sherry, am I going to do that? Because I want to feel more present and more passionate and more aroused when I'm with him because I'm filling up my own cup and I'm focusing on my arousal. And for Erica, off traveling the world, kind of in the single space, I don't know, maybe you're even, yeah, I think there's a boyfriend at home. I don't know what's happening with that, but you know, maybe it's, you're meeting a young, handsome man over chips and salsa in, in Mexico. <laughs> and the arousal is coming from the excitement there. But when Michael and I were at the lowest of low in our marriage, I was like, you know what? Whether we stay together or we're not together, I'm still left with me. So I might as well work on communicating when, how, what, my, what my desires are and what my needs are and practicing, really focusing on myself and sharing appreciation for when he's doing it in a way that I feel heard and seen and loved. And being tender with myself and being tender with him. <laughs>